It's Halloween, when bats leave belfries, witches take to their broomsticks, and vampires lift the lids of their coffins. A fitting night to meet the master. If I'd known you were coming, I'd have baked a cake. Come and sit down, dear boy. <laughs> that is not the line I expected from Peter Cushing, the master of horror. I ought to ask you, really, Peter, what you think is, is the secret of frightening people? Um, I think, by the letters I received, the films that I was lucky enough to be in with dear old Christopher Lee and co, um, it left a lot to the imagination. What the um, young people don't like today with the so-called horror films, they call them chainsaw films with heads exposing. No, they don't like that. And both generations, mine and the younger, much younger generation, write and say what they loved about the old Hammer films was that so much was left to their imagination. There was characterization, whereas today it's all special effects. And uh, I think it goes back to the old thing of the uh, going through the ghost train at a fair, you know, with the, uh, you cuddle your girl and go, go have a lovely scream coming, the, knowing that you'll come out at the end of the tunnel quite happy and safe. Whereas today, it's so gruesome. But I think, you see, any art, I think, uh, gives a flavour of what goes on in the actual world. You see, and I'm afraid today, it's a pretty brutal world we live in, isn't it? What frightens you? Me. <laughs> me frightens me. I look in the mirror, it's all crazy. <laughs> that face again. No, what frightens me? Um, now, I love animals. I adore all animals. But the one that really scares me to death is a bull. I was chased by one once. I think that's why. And they, they really do scare me. But I can't bear uh, that awful sport in Spain where they kill them. That's wrong. That's wrong. But um, no, nothing. I, I get awfully... Well, the business scares me. I, I mean, all actors are jellies. They tremble and try to look as though it's all so easy. But uh, it ain't so, boy. <laughs> to taint to me, and the older I get, the more nervous I become. <laughs> uh, oh, so <sorry. laughs> There you are, you see, you pull yourself together, you can always do it. Were there things in the old days of Hammer Horror where you'd say, oh, I'm sorry, I can't do that? No, no. I think they were written with great taste, and of course, I think where the script writers were so uh, fortunate, they, the two great ones, of course, um, um, Dracula by Bram Stoker, and uh, Frankenstein by Mary Shelley were really quite classics of, of their own. So they had those as a basis to write their stories. The only problem was, because of the enormous success of both those pictures, um, they wanted to capitalise on it. And of course, the writers were, were, were sort of hoisted on a bit of a petard. They had to write variations on the same theme and that was the difficulty. And you, I don't know if you've ever seen them, but gradually Frankenstein got much more, um, what's the word, not vicious, but... Uh, uh, well, he, he, he to, to make it a little different, they got him to be a, a little more not caring how he got a body to work on it, as long as he got it, you know. Whereas in the original one, he was, which dear uh, Colin Clive played so beautifully with Boris Carlo. Ours was based more or less upon that script, where he really was a dedicated scientist trying to work out how the human body worked for the good of mankind. Excellent, excellent. I couldn't have done better myself. Pop it in. Approximately one hour, when the narcosis wears off, we shall see. Let's hope it's he who sees. He who sees? Sorry. <laughs> you see. <laughs> oh, I like that. <laughs> 
You did a lot of work with Vincent Price oh, and Christopher Lee. Yes. Did you have a lot in common as a trio? Oh, no. I mean, there's... I think prose is so marvellous, you know. I mean, we don't see each other for years when we meet. It's like yesterday, you know. I mean, dear Vincent lives in America. Dear old Christopher lives in London. He's all, all over the world doing things. But we, we, we keep contact and we ring. And strange enough, um, Vincent's the eldest. I'm the middle and dear old Christopher's the baby. Uh, uh, our birthdays fall, uh, mine falls on the 26th of May. Please make a note of that. And the other two on the 27th. So it is extraordinary, should we all. Gemini, isn't it? Not that I know much about this. Yes, yes. You did some work quite early on in Hollywood. Who did you work with? I had been in repertory for about... I got onto the stage when, in 1936 in repertory. And after about four years, I'd always had this great ambition to go out and work in Hollywood and to see where Tom Mix lived. Tom Mix in my day was a sort of John Wayne, you know, today. Um, so, having saved up a tiny bit of money, I asked my dear dad if he would help me to get across uh, the, the uh, pond. So he said, yes, my boy, and uh, gave me a one-way ticket, which worried me a bit, but um, when I, upon inquiry he said, well, you see, if you don't, success, you, will be able, you don't succeed, you will have to swim home, so that should give you some sort of inspiration to get on my own. Now, I've heard you actually work with Laurel and Hardy. Yes, yes. Well, I was only a, a glorified extra, but it was a wonderful to think I've worked with the two greatest um, uh, American uh, comics, although Laurel was English, but, and the two greatest English ones, you know, uh, um, Morecambe and Wise, I think it's wonderful. And that was one of the jobs I got the one with Laurel and Hardy during the period of my deciding to try and get home uh, uh, and before I succeeded. It's because I made quite a number of very small pictures in, in, in Hollywood during that first time. Were you a great fan of Eric and Ernie in spite of the fact they never paid you? Oh, I adore them. I think they were so clever. They were absolutely wonderful. And you know, the, I don't know if you saw any of them, but there was a most wonderful running gag. I appeared with them for about, oh, at least seven, eight times. And each time I was demanding my, to be paid for my first one that I done. And they kept getting away with it. And right at the very last one I did with them, uh, I succeeded. I got my money. <laughs> and then when dear Morecambe had his first heart attack, uh, he was asked by the press, after he'd got a bit better, uh, if he ever paid me. And he said, yes, and he did that with his God, and said, and look what happened to me. <laughs> Peter, Peter, I'm very, very sorry about this. This must be very embarrassing for you, that he should ridicule you like this, really. I do apologise. As a matter of fact, you're my favourite star. <laughs> you crawler! <laughs> When that telegram came from him this morning, begging for work, you said to me, Peter Cushing? Who's Peter Cushing, you said? Having played a lot of goodies in sort of bad situations, you did get to play a real baddie in Star Wars. But I heard a little rumour that you actually played him in a pair of carpet slippers. Now, is this true? <laughs> Where do you get all this information from, my dear boy? <laughs> yes, true. Um, usually, Burmans who do my clothes I've got enormous feet, size 12, you know. They make my boots for me because they have to. Uh, but this time they had, they had to give me a pair from stock. They were agony, I think. They really were. I was staggering around. And I said, look, look George, you know, I, I'm not asking for close-ups, but do you think from now on you could shoot me from the waist up? Because I'm, I, I cannot bear these. I'm not giving the performance I should. So he agreed, and there I am stomping around, looking rather cross permanently and a pair of carpet slippers. I hear you've now gone into the pop world. <laughs> well, <laughs> yes. It's a lovely uh, uh, anti-war poem. We will turn it into a, a rap record. So I said in all my innocence, does that mean what you do for Christmas? Wrap it up and... Th no, no, no. So uh, I said, well, I'm fascinated. Who likes this sort of thing? Those days said, watch Top of the Pops, which I did. And I'm still deaf. But uh, well, I, th I think, as I said earlier, it is an actor's mission to entertain. If I can entertain today's children, kids, with that sort of thing, I am absolutely delighted. No white peaks on mountains high, for there is no snow left in the sky. No children going out to play upon a 
sunny summer's day. No lovers to kiss or caress in the park. And when the sun's bright, it still seems dark. It still seems dark. It still seems dark. Lovely, lovely man. Very nice. If you want that Snow White Peaks, it's not coming out until next week, but he's a brilliant chance to be the question. And an ace watercolourist as well. But now for the rest of this special bumper edition of...